Yes. <laughs> the believo meter. A couple of mad scientists here. Either that or we're in the, uh, the Willy Wonka chocolate factory. Look at Connie. You look like shady in the back. I know. We yeah. see look good. You look good. Stuff. Well, they you had know. You up back front. There. Yeah, you're the weirdo back Diabolical there. Diabolical with your chemicals back there. Uh, regardless, this is the believo meter. I'll give you a team or a individual or a scenario. You tell me how much you believe that this will last going forward. So let's start off with to bring its team, the Red Wings. How about this? 5 1 and 0 to start this season, currently second in the Atlantic Division. Connie, I'll start with you. What is your believometer on the Wings right now? I'm a believer. In fact, I've got them making the playoffs. I'm still a little concerned about goaltending. Their defense, they could still add a guy. But what they did add this offseason was Jeff Petrie, who's what, 6'3? Justin Hall, 6'4. Now, they're not tough players, but you're tough to play against when you're a big body like that. Uh, they added Clint Costin from the Very Edmonton Oilers. I like he's a tough guy to play against. I like that. Uh, and of course, that number one line with uh, Lucas Raymond, uh, and we just saw Alex DeBrinket and Dylan Larkin, absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, I'm a strong believer in these guys. I'd like to see them add one more D, and I hope the goaltending holds up. It has so far. Weeks, you're a better judge than I am of that. I'm a believer of this team right now. You know, I had a good chance to speak to their staff uh, last week when they were here. Both head coach Derek Lalonde and our man Alex Tangi, assistant coach Bob Bugner, assistant. I think the way this team is constructed now, there's a lot more pieces on the chessboard for them. Mm. I feel like they're a deeper team. They certainly have more layers to their attack. Yeah. I just spoke to Joel Quenville on the way in here, uh, who won those Stanley Cups as a head coach in Chicago, and he said, I love the cat. I go, yeah. I remember you telling me about to bring it up when you had him there in Chicago at his first training camp. So he was pretty emphatic about him. This is just a more complete team all around. I like what I'm seeing from the wings so far. I don't know if they're going to be partying up and down Woodward Ave in Detroit yet, yet, but I would be very excited about what I'm seeing at this point if I was there. You know why Joel loves the cat? He went after Josh Manson, fought Josh Manson. Josh Manson's 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 yeah, it's a big, tough man. The cat's 5'7", five, 5'8", five, so he's got 6 inches on him, 25 pounds. Alex DeBrinkett has a lot of fight in that Not cat. Not the size of the dog in the fight. Right, uh, right. believe meter 1 to 10, because we can go on. And right now? They all believe. Believe. 8. Okay. Yeah, seven and a half. Okay. Yep, seven and a half. Okay. I'm down with them. I like right. what they're doing. Are you down with the Edmonton Oilers? It was cup or bust coming into the season. Whew, the news, the sky is falling in Edmonton right now. Connor McDavid out one to two weeks with the injury. One, three, and one to start the year. Currently fifth in the Pacific Division. believe -o meter where are we at? <laughs> I would say I'm at a six. A six piece. Connie's got to whip up some more chemicals. Yeah, he's got to bring some more chemicals to the floor. I'm at it. Look, Jay Woodcroft, I said this on the, on the studio yesterday. I've known him since we were kids. He's a very good young coach. The mandate internally was cup or bust. They said that externally. Connor McDavid now injured, but they do have Leon Dreisaitl, who's a league MVP in his own. The yeah, Edmonton Oilers are much better than, than their record suggests right now. So I think you need to be a little bit cautious. But I would still put it at a six, six and a half. I believe in their squad. It's just been a difficult start for them, Connie. What was the Yogi Berra's line? It's getting late early. And that's what I'd be concerned of if I was a fan of the Edmonton Oilers. I'm not concerned with this Edmonton Oilers team. And I know it looks like Connor McDavid will be out a week, maybe two weeks. Uh, their shooting percentage, if you look at it, way down from last year. That will revert back to the mean. The goaltending has not been very good. Skinner had a fantastic regular season last year. He has not played very well. They will get better. Um, I, Vander Kane hasn't really shown up yet, and Evander Kane is a big part of that team. Zach Hyman's been great. Uh, of course, Connor McDavid, Dreisaitl have been fantastic. He got about his playing time the other that's, night. Uh, uh, that's good. Yeah, and, and, that's and good. Yeah, I like, I like that. that. Yeah. I like that. I'll tell you why. Go ahead. Uh, well, because you, you put up or you shut up, yeah. and he's he's like, hey, I deserve to play, and he said that. It's a shot across the bow. Let's see how he, see how he responds. But uh, right now, yeah, they're not where they want to be, but I think they'll be just fine. Give them another 10, 12 games. All right, where are you at? 10? 9? No, and yeah, I'm, I'm an eight there too. Okay, I like it. <laughs> okay, all right. The great eight over yeah, there. Exactly. Constant on the ball. Yeah. Why do you like the Evander Kane situation? What I like about that is uh, Evander Kane was brought to Edmonton and re-signed in Edmonton, was brought to Edmonton at the request of Connor McDavid. Mm -hmm. It was the Washington Capitals with Ovi pushing them to get him, and it was the Oilers. I think he's an outstanding fit in Edmonton, not to say he wouldn't be in Washington. However, they went out and they signed Connor Brown. Okay, it's fine. But Evander still wasn't getting the same ice looks that he was last season. And he had really good chemistry with McDavid. But that's okay. Sometimes through adversity, you can see these things. But he wasn't just sitting down and saying, okay, well, whatever. He's competitive. He went out and fought. 
And I like his interview with Scott Oak. He's like, hey, if I'm, if I'm not playing, I better right. do something. I better get out there. Over there. Exactly. Seven, eight minutes in the box. 100%. Yeah. So uh, I think the frustration there up in Alberta with them is, is well documented. But I, I respect that because they have that hunger in their group. Again, from Connor McDavid and Leon, it was cup or bust, boys. Let's go. It's been a slow start for them. All right, uh, no frustration in the city of brotherly love. I mean, everything's rolling. The Phillies, the Eagles, mm, oh, man. and the Flyers as well. First place in the Metro. They're 3-1-1 one, one to start the year. believe o meter where are we at? My believe o meter is a five with them, mm -hmm. but I'm largely impressed by what they've done to this point. And the only reason I'm going to say it's five is it's going to hinge on the health. Because this team with Couturier back is a different team. Mm -hmm. With Cam Atkinson back, they're a different team. So we root for the health and safety of all the players. Always. But if those two veteran guys, one if not both of them, if they can't stay healthy, then the mix of the team is a little bit different. Yeah. Who's the veteran guy there at Connie that can really kind of galvanize the group in the event that one of those guys goes down? And we hope that they don't. <laughs> well, hey, that, that's a real good question. Uh, it could be a, their goaltender, Carter Hart. I mean, he's been around long enough. Uh, he's got a leadership role on that team. Uh, and I agree with Couturier, though. I worry about him, though, because it was a back injury, right? Yes. He lost a full yes. year to a back injury. Those you never know about. Uh, you're never too sure about. But I, And there's Carter Hart right there. Uh, and, yeah, he, he, could be, he could be wearing a letter on this team. I like what the young kids have been doing, the Travis Connectors. And they're not so young anymore. Uh, the Farabees. And you mentioned Atkinson, too. He's still relatively young. These guys are up and coming, and... Uh, they're making some noise. They lost to the Dallas Stars in overtime, 5-4. They played a fantastic – it was a game. And Dallas, a lot of people think of Dallas Stars are coming out of the West. Philly gave them uh, a run for their money. I need a number, Connie. Don't <laughs> dance around it. Uh, I'm going to – I'm a six and a half for okay. Philly. Okay. Six and a half. All right. So you like it, not really believing, though, at a five. Yeah. Uh, how about this? Jack Hughes, he's got four goals, six helpers, ten points to start the year. Your believo meter, Connie, Jack Hughes as a Hart Trophy finalist. I believe in Jack Hughes because I believe in Tom Fitzgerald. And did you play with Tom yeah, anywhere? Yeah, yeah played I played a little Florida. bit with him with yeah. the New York Islanders. And he played with Pat LaFontaine. He played with Brian Trache. He played with Patrice Bergeron when he was in Boston. He said this kid is a competitor. And if Tom Fitzgerald thinks that you're a competitor, you're a competitor. He's look at the numbers he's put up this year. Uh, it's been a one-man show, really, for the most part in New Jersey and, and what Jack Hughes has done. Uh, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's fearless. And he look, goes to those tough areas. We talk about between the dots. That's exactly where Jack Hughes heads an awful lot. He'll go to those greasy spots in front of the net. He's willing to pay the rest. There he is again. This is a great clip of where you want to be shooting the puck from. So, yeah, I'm a believer in Jack Hughes. He could do it this year. We're talking about the Hart Trophy, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I think if Connor McDavid. Finalist, finalist. Oh, so oh finalist. Yeah. Totally. Finalist, okay. yeah, because it's Connor McDavid's to lose, but Jack Hughes will be in the conversation. Eight and a half, nine. Where are you at? Oh, I'm a nine. Ooh. I'm a nine for Jack Hughes. Yeah. He's believing. That about you time. At? 12. Ooh. I'm a 10. I'm a 10. I've been uh, a Jack Hughes guy from day one. He knows it. His brothers know it. His family know it. Mm -hmm. I've been a Jack Hughes guy. I'm, I'm all in on all the Hughes, by the way. Yeah. If the parents were still playing, put them in there, too. <laughs> Mom if the dog the was playing, athlete. exactly. If the dog's playing, if their gerbil's playing, <laughs> put them in there. I'm behind them. I'm all things Hughes family. But I got to tell you this. What I love about Jack Hughes, right, is everybody looks at the skill. They look at the talent, the ability, uh, the creativity, the pizzazz. But they don't see the competitiveness. Mm. I've had a couple separate conversations with him two years ago. Hughesy, 85 points. Okay. Just last week at Prudential Center, Hughesy, 105 points. Okay. He had 99 last year. <laughs> exactly. Man, and he was he injured. to the century mark. That's right. So to me, if he stays healthy, he's in that the century club. But I love the way he's continuing to attack. He plays on his toes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't play on his heels. He's assertive. And he's an unselfish player. So whether it's him... With Brat, whether it's him with Heesher, whoever he's paired with, he's a very unselfish superstar as well. And that goes a long way in the dressing room, especially for a young player. The Hughes Journal projected uh, first round pick of <laughs> yeah, 2028. Exactly. I like that. Um, exactly. Cooley, much like the temperature in this studio, Finally. Logan Cooley as the Calder Trophy winner. Believe meter. Uh, no. Uh, I, I, that was, you know, that was actually to you, though. No, hey, and I like I'm the unselfish. I just said, I just said uh, yeah, Jack's I dished, unselfish. Dished the rock. I just dished the puck. I, you He's know in what? a better shooting spot than me right There's now. There's another Connor <laughs> in the NHL, and his last name is McDavid. It's Bedard. And he has been special. 
He's only going to get better when he gets to know the NHL a little bit. Uh, but Logan Cooley's been fantastic. I did not think Logan Cooley would come out of Minnesota this year. I really didn't. Minnesota, if you don't know your college hockey, went to the Frozen Four last year. I believe they lost in the final to Quinnipiac. Yeah, you're right. You got it. So he had an opportunity to maybe win a national championship at the University of Minnesota. I thought he'd stay there. But Bill Armstrong did a fantastic job of selling the Arizona Coyotes, and so he finds himself in Arizona. He's going to have a good year because they're going to rely on him an awful lot. And there you see some of the rookie point leaders this year. And, of course, Bedard, well, they're all tied with four. So Logan Cooley's done great. Uh, I don't think there's any chance, as long as Connor Bedard stays healthy, I don't think there's any chance he wins Rookie of the Year. Yeah. Right. Zero. Connie's at a zero. Connie's at a zero. I like it. I'm, I'm at a five because what I've seen from Logan Cooley and, and seeing him up close is, his skating is dynamic. He can attack in different ways. Connor Bedard, to me, still ends up winning mm -hmm. uh, this, I think, all things being equal. But Logan Cooley so, is a factor. So how are you a five, then? I'm a five because it's Connor Bedard's, I believe. So you should be but a if there's a guy, Cooley. No, but he's so good. He's so talented that I think he could challenge. Okay. It's not going to be I'm like a runaway. I'm just not letting you no, no, no. easy way It's not okay. going to be a runaway. Okay. Because, right? like you know, a lot of people yeah. look, they're like, Hans Bedard, okay, right. forget, there's nobody and else. And there's been a couple of years, this years past good, that we know that's at right. November who's winning that contest. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. This is a guy that can challenge. He's going to be there. He can challenge. He's nice with it. I like it. Can yeah. you imagine Logan Cooley and Matthew Nyes were on the same line last year? Yeah, it was so, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, and like they you were said, good. Cooley probably could have stayed at Minnesota. He was a Hobie Baker finalist yeah. last year. He probably would have won it this year. Mm -hmm.